Hi. So one of my favorite features about the Go.game engine is just how easy it is to quickly put together a simple user interface. Now of course it can be a bit more work if you want to really fine tune everything and design exactly how you want the user interface to look. But today I am going to go over some of the easiest nodes to quickly put together a functional user interface which allows you to test your games or use a user interface as part of a game jam or something like that where you don't have a lot of time to fine tune everything. So for starters in our new scene I'm just going to click on the user interface which is going to create a control node. Now the control is our most basic version of a user interface node. Now an important thing for a control node is this layout button up here. We can specify which part of the screen should actually be used by this control. Now by default full rect means the entire rectangle that this control has access to is going to be used. This control can be part of your camera if your control is on a canvas layer. I'm just gonna quickly add one so you see what it is. Canvas layer. This node is basically a static node that's always going to be in front of your camera. So any control node you add to that are not going to move around with uh, if you move a camera around. They're always going to be centered like you might want to have an HP bar, a point score, any any of those kind of UI items you probably want to put on a canvas layer sooner or later. On the other hand you can also attach a control node to a node 2D to make it show up inside of your world in a specific area. Either way whatever space is available if this is set to the full rectangle, your control is going to be using all the space it has. This is important for automatic scaling. Let's take a look. I am going to add a button. Now by default the button is going to be as small as it can be. So it's quite small up there in the corner. It doesn't take up the entire screen. I can tell the button to take up the entire rectangle. Now this is a really large button. I can put some text on here. The text is quite tiny. It's not really readable at this point. But yeah, using full rectangle the button already takes up all the space inside of this node. Now the important thing is, I mentioned that this here uses up all the space inside of whatever it is uh, given. This always depends on your parent node. Let's use a container. What I can do here is I can take for example a VBOX container. A VBOX container basically puts a list of items below each other. I'm going to give the VBOX container access to the full rectangle and put the button as a child of it. So now the button currently isn't using up all the space anymore and we can see the button can no longer select a layout. The reason is the button is now inside of a container. Anything that's part of a container, that's a child of a container, is only going to be scaled relative to this container. The container decides what can happen to it. That's why this button went a lot smaller here. It basically still uses the full width, but it doesn't use the height anymore. We can change some stuff there by going into the size flex. There they are. We can tell it to try to expand. Now this is only going to work if the node above actually allows it to expand. But in this case it does. So now the button once again takes up all the space. But what happens if we have several buttons? Aha! The space is now being split up between the separate buttons. Each one on its own can no longer take up the entire space. The same thing if we change the type of this VBOX container into an HBOX container. You can already kind of see it from the image. It's going to be putting them left to right now instead of top to down. Now you can see here it's still the same buttons but the gap is now here. They're next to each other now. And still taking up as much space as they can. They don't necessarily have to do this. Again we can change the size flex to say this one is only going to take up as much space as it needs. Which in this case also depends on the text inside of it. She's right more text it's going to get bigger. Let's put that back. Put the size flex back to expand. So here's just some of the basics. Now let's take a look at some more stuff. We can add a grid 
container. Grid containers are very convenient for many things you can do in Godot. Again, it's not gonna do anything on its own, but if we add stuff to it, let's see, what can we add to it? I guess we can just go for button again. Buttons are just the easiest ones to work with here because they already have some color data and all that by default. Give it size flag expand. And now, first of all, by default, this is only set to one column. If we click the grid container, columns is one by default, which means if we put this in, it's going to act exactly the same as a VBox container. But this can change quickly if we set, for example, the columns to three. Now this is a nice one. We have buttons here, 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 here. Builds them in a nice grid with however many columns we put. It's automatically gonna scale to whatever size the grid container has. If the grid container, for which we can change the size, since it's not part of a container itself, gets smaller, then so does anything in it. If we put a second grid container, let's move that. I'm just going to use this and move it to the side a bit. You can notice that since this is just an ordinary control node, we can move around the grid container however we like. It's not affected by its parent very much. We can even overlap different UI nodes like this. We can't do that inside of here. Like if we try to move this, it's not really gonna work. It's not gonna let us, it's gonna give us a warning here because these buttons are controlled by the grid container. That's the whole point of a container node. It controls basically most of what its children can do. One thing we do want to be aware of here is, of course, that we can change the text size. I had some buttons here, for example, but the text is basically unreadable since the screen is quite large and the text is quite small. If we want to change that, we can use a custom font. Let's see, here it is, custom fonts, or we can use a theme. If we create a theme, then the font can be part of that theme. I'm just gonna show you quick. The theme can have a default font. New dynamic font is what I'm gonna choose here. Click that, click font. And in font data, I'm just going to drop an OTF file. There are a few files you can get. You can find basically all of these on Google fonts or various other sources for free fonts online. If I put that in here, it's already getting bigger and it's going to be using the, in this case, Noto Sans JP font. It also adds some settings so we can change the size. 32, uh, 128, there, large font, easily readable now. The nice thing about a theme is we can easily apply it to uh, as a default for the entire project. So we can have a theme used basically everywhere. Or alternatively, we can just set a lot of settings for a specific type of button. I'm not going to go into all the details for this right now because this would take a pretty long video just on its own to explain all of the features of a theme. But basically you can change exactly what your buttons and other UI elements are going to look like. The alternative here is if we don't want to use a theme at all, let's clear that. We can use the custom font here. This is basically just setting a font for this individual button. And then the same way, font. Add the font to the font data, settings, size, 128. For the time being it's gonna look the same but it doesn't have all the other features for changing what the background looks like or what else you want to show. Some nodes that are always good to have are things like a label. I sometimes use labels in game and attach them to characters just so I can display some information about what's going on for debugging purposes. And of course you can use them to actually display text in game as part of text boxes or menus or whatever. Now uh, if we just put some text in here, again, same as the buttons, we, you can apply a theme or a custom font. This is going to be the case for basically every UI element that has text in it. If you need something a bit more dynamic than a label, you can use a line edit. Now the line edit is going to be a bit more complex. So basically you can still put text in it, but you also see that it has a background already. And additionally, it has some options in game. Let's see if we can run this quick. Okay, this is quite small now, but you can kind of see it here. I can actually mark the text and type in it in game. Whether this can be edited, can be uh, changed here in the settings. 
or we can set it to secret so it only stay, shows stars if you want to use it for entering passwords or something like that. There are quite a few settings here you can play around with. In any case, it's a pretty useful node to be aware of. There are some pretty useful things like the pop-up nodes. The pop-up nodes, accept dialog, file dialog, they are pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory what they are. But essentially, let's just add a file dialog and see nothing because it's invisible, of course. There we go, there it is. So the file dialog, pretty obvious, I guess. It's going to allow us to open files from within a game. For example, if you want to load or export save files, you can open them in save mode, open mode, whatever. All of the things you might want a file menu to do, you can pretty much do in here. There's a lot of these nodes you probably just want to play around with and give a shot. Now, I already showed you what the basic button is. There are a few other useful ones, the checkbox, for example. You put some text next to the checkbox, so that's nice. And of course this part is clickable and then it's going to put a check icon. Simple, but quite nice. We have the check button. It's basically the same thing, just with a different icon. I'm not going to show that now. The yeah, an option button is actually another nice one. I should show that, at least in principle. So the option button is going to have a little drop down menu showing you the different options. You can add the options in code, just uh, check the docs for option button, it's going to show you exactly how you can add options to this. And then they can be selected in a drop down menu, pretty nice. The H split and V split containers are similar to the H box container and V box container, except they only split two areas. So if you want to be specific, that could be useful in some cases. Let me use one quick just to um, showcase that. I'll just put in two buttons again, because they're easy. And of course I would like the buttons to expand. Size flex, expand in both directions. Now if I play this, for one the screen is split into two halves, which I guess is obvious, an H split container. But also these elements are actually quite like the UI within the Godot engine, which means we can actually move the split around. We can customize in-game how we want the split to look like. This does give a bit more control to the player, so use it wherever that is required. Let's see, one more thing I might go into is a scroll container. Let's see, so it's going to give a node configuration warning. It wants some child node a VBox or HBox container or something of the sort. So let's just add one quick. A child node VBox container. And now what we can do here is, of course, we can tell it to expand with the size flex, and that way the VBox container uses up the entire space. But that on its own is not actually going to do anything with the scroll container there yet. For that we need the VBox container to become larger than its parent. The scroll container allows that. What we can do here, for example, is set a minimum size. Let's say the Y, that's our height, is 1080 times 2, so twice the screen height. That's how large the container is now. So if we put in some buttons, let's say ordinary button, give the button the expand size flags, so it uses up some space, give it like four buttons in there. And now two of them are actually outside of what you can see if we load this in. So we have one button here, one here. But there's actually a scroll bar here now, and we can just scroll down to the other two. I'll make it larger so maybe you can see a bit better, but yeah, we can move this, we can scroll with our mouse wheel, all of that. The same thing works if you use it horizontally. Yeah, I guess I can just set it wider. 1920. Why is this set to 198? Times 2. There we go. Now it's quite large in the width as well. And now while we can still scroll up and down, we can also scroll to the side. Now we, we can't really see anything since the buttons don't have much texture to them. 
But it's happening. Yeah, it's it's scrolling. You can at least see the scroll bar. If you actually have some elements with a bit more visual appeal to them, it should be more obvious. Right, that's just a quick overview here over some of the most useful control nodes. Of course, you can always just add another ordinary control. If you want to have a parent that you can easily move around. For example, I can just put this here in the corner, give it a specific size, put it like that, add a child node, a VBox container, layout, full rectangle, and now you can see since I said full rectangle, it's going to use the entire rectangle of its parent. But the parent only has this little area, not the entire screen anymore. And so that's all it can use. Add some buttons, because I like buttons. And that's the area the buttons are going to be ending up in. Simple. And I think if you play around with the various nodes I showed you here today, you should be able to build some simple but quite useful UI. Now, one last detail here. I'm just again using the button as example, but the same applies to many of the other nodes. If you click on next to the inspector on the node tab, you will find a bunch of things you can use here. You can use most importantly, most of the time for buttons and the like, is the pressed signal. If you attach that to a script, you can execute any code you want as soon as that button is pressed with like one or two lines of code. It's very simple, it's very little work, and you can have a working UI up and running in just a few minutes for any small game you want. For a bigger one, well, eventually you're going to want to go deeper into how to design a custom theme. But this will be all for today. Bye.